This reality and architecture bending spy adventure provides inspiration for everybody's wardrobe from the positively dandy right down to the casual, even crumpled gent. The costumes for each character, designed by Jeffrey Curland, were not only inspired by the individual characters, but also by the overall theme of architecture. So you're going to see a lot of pinstripe shirts and window paint suits in this movie. But for this episode, we're going to concentrate on the main character, Cobb, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. But let's get into Cobb's wardrobe. He is a genius architect, but a dark and sorrowful man with a tragic past and an irresolute but consuming future. He's a very interesting and driven person, but not someone you would invite to a party. And we can see this played out by a dark and broody wardrobe, but of course not to mention stylish. Nobody ever looks as good when they are miserable in real life as they do in the movies. Inception opens with Cobb, DiCaprio, dressed in black tie. Black tie is of course an extremely formal dress code for important events and very occasionally weddings. The reason for it is twofold, to make all men look equal at the event and to let their partner shine in their beautiful dresses. There is actually a lot of room for personal expression when dressing within the rules of black tie. It's all in the details. The black refers to the tie, of course, not the suit, and the most traditional color actually being midnight blue. But here Leo goes for jet black. He is wearing a necktie rather than a bow tie and shows how while he does not want to stand out for his mission, he is also not concerned with frills and is a no-nonsense character. He looks elegant and serious at the same time. Of course, the gun helps and is not traditionally part of the dress code unless you live in Texas. As we jump out of the dream, we return to Cobb in the real world where he is wearing a less formal gray suit with a lightly striped shirt and dark gray necktie. This lack of color is a theme running throughout Cobb's wardrobe. He tends towards blacks and grays, but proves how those colors can be extremely versatile. And I love the extremely high shirt collars in this movie. They are one of the aspects of the wardrobe that leaves the style quite timeless. They seem to hint at the 70s, but are far more contemporary. And timelessness is always a good thing to have in your wardrobe. You don't want to spend a lot of money on a trendy suit that will have a very short shelf life. Stick to traditional proportions. When Cobb visits his father-in-law, played by Michael Caine, a favorite actor of Christopher Nolan's, he is dressed down but still sporting a monochrome look. This is actually quite a sophisticated dress code for anyone to follow. If you really know what you like and commit to it, you can have a diverse wardrobe, but one that people will always associate with you. His shirt is crumpled. It could be denim or flannel, two soft fabrics that say relaxed so you don't have to. He is wearing a soft wool or cashmere overcoat thrown loosely over that. But of course he is on the run and wants to keep a low profile, but in reality having an overcoat over your shirt without a jacket is still quite a sharp look while remaining informal. In his meeting in Mombasa with Eames, played by Tom Hardy, we can again see Cobb's penchant for black and grey and the monochrome look, and we can see the vast contrast between the two characters. Eames is quite a flashy, flamboyant character compared to Cobb, and we can see this reflected in his wardrobe. I'll be taking a look at his wardrobe later on in another episode. This time Cobb is wearing a dark grey, heavily textured jacket. It could be fresco or a similar open weave wool fabric, which has a nice slub to it. In other words, it does not have a smooth finish like a banker's suit might. The open weave allows air to flow through it, making it wearable in hot weather, and also gives it a casual edge, allowing the wearer to appear relaxed. He's wearing a dark grey shirt which matches the jacket closely and gives him a very slick look. Again, you wouldn't mistake him for a banker, and of course the open collar gives his relaxed look its final touch. Later Cobb throws on a lighter grey jacket over the same shirt, and in this scene we can see that almost every fabric he wears has texture. Texture gives clothes a very rich bespoke feel, even if they were off the rack, and implies affluence and individuality. His shirt has a subtle large crosshatch pattern, and his jacket has a more intense pattern of horizontal and vertical threads. The jacket also has patch pockets, which are pockets sewn into the outside of the jacket, rather than an opening with the pockets on the inside, and this is considered much more casual. He has on black shoes, dark grey pants, mid-grey shirt, and finally his jacket being the lightest grey. This keeps the eye moving upwards towards his face. If you wore lighter coloured shoes, eyes would continuously and subconsciously glance downwards, and there's no good reason for anyone staring at your feet. It's an excellent smart casual outfit that is both relaxed and sophisticated. On the flight to America, DiCaprio has a striking pinstripe shirt with one of those amazing collars and a diagonally striped necktie. And he continues a similar look with a different pinstripe shirt and necktie in the bar scene in the dream. You might be inclined to think grey is a boring colour. The word itself is often used to define uninteresting things. And while it might make for a dull sky, it does not apply to clothing. And DiCaprio proves this by almost exclusively wearing variations of that colour throughout the movie. This is not to say that Cobb can't let his hair down when he wants to. In Paris he wears, at least in his dream wardrobe, a very laid-back look with a denim shirt and a cotton trucker jacket. 
but he balances it with dark grey trousers and leather shoes so he doesn't appear too lacklustre. He's still the boss and needs his people to listen to him. But one of the biggest headliners of the movie was that leather jacket. Cobb has a brown museum leather jacket that is straight off the back of a tired 70s detective anti-hero beaten and aged, but not worn in threadbare. This is such a striking yet understated jacket that the wearer is immediately imbued with the heritage of the leather itself. Underneath he wears an open neck flannel shirt with a window pane check on it. Of course it's great to have an Oscar winning designer to dress you, but we can do well with the poor man's version of this by learning from the pairing principles he has used to build an interesting and powerful wardrobe from both formal and casual clothes with the minimum of fuss. As the saying goes, less is more and is very true with the style in this movie. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the next episode, we'll be looking at Arthur, one of my favourite characters, played by Gordon Joseph Levitt. And soon after that, we'll begin a series on my third favourite James Bond, starting with Casino Royale and the Tom Ford controversy.